Over 100 miles an hour, man. <laughs> I would, I'd never do that. What no do you way. mean over 100 miles an hour? You crazy? Hi guys, so in today's video, I'm gonna tell you about my experience of six months of owning my childhood dream supercar, the Lamborghini Gallardo. So let's walk around the outside of the car because it's obviously a stunning, aggressive looking beast. Um, but I'm gonna to talk to you about a few of the things that I like and maybe don't like so much about the car. So firstly, the shape of the car is absolutely stunning. Um, it's incredible. It's kind of like what you think of when you think about your classic Lamborghini shape and I absolutely love it. Um, it's finished with the factory black Callisto alloys, um, which are actually quite rare. Most of these come in steel and silver. So that's quite a cool feature and I really love that sort of like black on yellow look. Um, and then I also love the fact that it's a spider. Uh, some people will argue that the coupe looks more aggressive than the spider. And I, I tend to agree with that, but at the same time, there's something really fucking cool about driving about with a roof down on this on a sunny day. Not that we get many of them here in Northern Ireland, but when it is out, it's class. Um, so coming on around to the back, um, I love the back end of this thing. Um, as you can see, it's absolutely incredible. The sound is amazing and it just looks so good. Um, and yeah, uh, I have to mention the paintwork as well. So this is Giallo Midas, and this is a free uh, layer paint type, which is pearlescent. Very, very difficult to replicate, and it's absolutely stunning. When the light hits this thing at nighttime, it's amazing. So um, yeah, it's fair to say, I absolutely love the outside of the car. Some of the drawbacks for me personally would be the front, um, and that would be the lights on these earlier models. They're a little bit boxy and classic looking, now, some people really like that kind of style of having the long light. Um, the Giardo LPs, which are the slightly newer ones than these, um, they actually shortened this, um, which is pretty cool and added the LEDs in. So I really do like that. Um, but I mean, it still looks fantastic and it still looks super aggressive. So yeah, that's the outside. Um, let's jump in. Sounds pretty good. So before the, the Giardo, I had a an R8, so I owned an R8, and it was one of the Mark One R8s, which was really cool. And it was probably my first kind of supercar. I got a Miltac titanium exhaust and stuff installed on it, and it sounded great. Driving the R8 every day, I managed to clock up loads and loads of miles, and then I, I, I'm not stupid or naive. There has to be a point where you part with a car. It was incredible. Got metal gray, or the R8, V8. Really, really nice entry into these kind of cars. And it went from the R8 to an I8, which was a massive mistake. It just totally lacked any kind of soul or rawness because of that hybrid feature. It just, it just wasn't for me. So I kept it for like three months after paying 3,000 quid extra to get it wrapped. And then I, I seen the Lamborghini online. I bought it online. It's the best thing I ever bought on the internet. <laughs> I've, I've had the car for six months now and I absolutely love it. If I had to say any downsides, it randomly just froze up in one five hours on the dash. It's nothing serious, it's nothing to be worried about and anybody out there that's watching this that owns a Lamborghini Gallardo, whether it's LP or pre-LP, they'll probably notice. If you haven't tightened the fuel cap enough as well, like it froze up an hour on the dash, you can't leave the thing anywhere. So for example, um, I went to a restaurant one day, actually I think it was with, with you, Ran. We went to the, a restaurant to grab some food for it, bringing the guys out for a bit of lunch. And by the time I left, I had a WhatsApp message from my brother, uh, and from my niece and basically like a group of lads like tiny kids had all sat on the bonnet crowded around the car there was like 15 of these guys um, so you just cannot leave the car anywhere because people want to get photos and stuff and that's cool I, I understand that for sure but um, it's just that you just don't know what's going to happen with it you can pick these up from anywhere high mileage 65,000 pound up to maybe 90 to 100 over 100 for the Super Ligaras but the problem is uh, people don't think about the running costs and the fuel bills, you know, the 300 pound a week and, and then the servicing and the maintenance. So a car that you bought for 70 grand, like I did, all of a sudden per, per year is costing an, an additional, you know, 10 to 15 grand on maintenance and fueling and all that. So they're, in a, they're an expensive hobby. Being in Northern Ireland, they're a wee bit of a heat magnet. 
Um, it's just because people just love the heat in this country. For every uh, 10 people you get that love the car, you get one asshole that shouts something like or rental or or something like that. From talking to other supercar owners in different parts of the world, um, it's actually no different in London, Miami, all that stuff. So it is what it is. Comes with the territory. At this point in my life, this is the only Lamborghini I'm buying. I'm not stupid with finances and this car has pretty much already depreciated as much as it will because it is an older Lamborghini. So I bought this cash, which means that I can drive this, enjoy it. Yeah, I'll lose a bit of money servicing it, maintaining it, all that kind of stuff. But at some point, I'm gonna move on from this car. Um, and when I do, I'll be able to pull most of my money back out of this. Have I been tempted to go for a newer Lamborghini? Absolutely. And you put a picture of this online, you're gonna get trolls saying, oh, it's an older one, it's this, it's that. And at the end of the day, I'm not losing anything on this. If I go and get a Lamborghini Aventador or I go and get a Huracan and I drive that for a year, typically I only keep my cars for a year, I'll probably lose like 20 grand on that car alone. And is that really worth it just for other people? No, this is the Lamborghini that suits me perfectly right now. I'm only 28 years of age. Um, as a child, I had pictures of this car on my wall alongside Nari, which you also got. This this was just my, my childhood dream car in bright yellow as well, so there you go. Um, I don't know why I would want to go for anything else. Uh, will I? Of course I will. They're all toys, they're all fun, but for now, you know, this thing here is just perfect, because I mean, you know, the rawness of this. Um, some people say you lose that with the, the newer Lamborghinis, the Huracans, the Aventadors, uh, and I have been in them and I've drove them. And I have to say, this is just so, so raw that it is perfect. It just wants to kill you. That's what I love about it. The car handles superbly. It's four wheel drive as well. I have a friend that has a Gallardo, he actually just sold it. Um, and his was an LP and it was rear wheel drive. And for example, like he couldn't even take it out in the rain or anything. Whereas with this bad boy, I'll drive this in the rain. I drive it in the dry, I drive, I drive it every single day. I always find an excuse to drive this car. I have a Range Rover as well. If I get literally two seconds of sun, I'm like, ah, oh, I can't not drive the Lambo today, the sun's out. Driving fast in this thing's f***ing brilliant. You could be doing anything, metaphorically, not saying that I've ever done it, but you could be doing like 130, um, guessing you wouldn't feel what that feels like. It's full leather, it has the yellow stitching, like the wee details that you can probably see in the seat and around the dash and stuff. But I mean, in terms of like functions and features and stuff like that, I upgraded the system to have CarPlay. So you can see here that like it has Spotify, it has all this cool stuff here, Audible for like listening to audiobooks. If I had to kept the old one, I probably would have been a little bit put off because it was the sat nav on it was um, and it didn't have any features bar like a radio and the radio was bollocks as well. I grew up in a council house. The area, you would never have seen cars like this. Never have seen cars like this. Start my own business um, with very little money, 500 quid, and started the company off. And it's grew over five years into a substantial business that you know has provided me with a great lifestyle. It's provided me with the opportunity to create um, jobs like for people like yourself, Ran, that you know allows them to do what they love every day in marketing and digital. For anyone that doesn't know. Uh, basically, my core business is a digital marketing agency. So we build websites, we run marketing campaigns, social campaigns, paid ads on Google and things like that. Uh, and we also shoot video. I ran behind the cameras, the man that leads all that side of the business. So we've got a very good business and um, that's allowed me to buy these things over time. It really makes you appreciate it because you've just worked so hard for it as well. Um, so that's pretty cool. And like whenever I bought this Lamborghini, in fact, I bought the R8, the i8 and this Lamborghini all cash. You know, like a couple of years ago, I could only have dreamed of being in a car like this, never mind owning it and owning it outright. So whenever you get this every day, you just can't help but be good and smile, yeah. So guys, there you have it. That's my experience of owning my childhood dream car, the Lamborghini Gallardo.